Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Gaffering Gear. Today it's another gear review. We're having a look at a brand called Golden Eagle, which I must confess I'd never heard about a month ago. So these lights are Bowen Mount Daylight COBs. They also have an umbrella attachment. They are no thrills. There's no special effects or anything fancy like that in them. You just turn them on and you get daylight. So low cost, high color render. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's go through what they cost and what you get for your money. So they have a 300 watt version, which I don't have here today. And the 300 watt version sells for 500 US dollars. This is the 200 watt version, which sells for 300 US dollars. Now for that money, you get the light, of course, which is quite well constructed. You get a very basic Bowen dish. Okay, so no thrills there. And you get a remote control. Now the remote control enables you to run up to four channels independently. So you could have four lights, for example, that you could control off the one remote. Now let's get straight into the negatives. All right, so the biggest negative with these units is they only run off AC power. So you can't run these from a battery. You can't do it, there's no DC inlet. The next negative for me is there's no DMX control. So that probably only affects professional gaffers. And the next big negative for me is these things do have a magenta color shift. So the color shift is equivalent to about a 1 8th correction gel. So if you don't mind your talent being a little bit pink, so a little bit uh, richer skin tones, it probably doesn't bother you at all. But if you're doing product photography with these, for example, that color shift could be problematic unless you gel correct it. And the next negative is the cooling fans. So I just fire up. Now, you can't set the rate at which the fans run. The fans always run at full speed. Now, I don't think the sound is going to be an issue out of these. I don't think you're going to be standing right next to it like I am, but some other reviewers have claimed that it could be an issue, and they do editing, whereas I'm just a lighting guy, so they could be correct. Okay, so let's get into the positives, and the overwhelming positive is the color rendering. So these things have a TM30 color vector score of 94%, and that's even right down at 5% brightness, which is the minimum that you can dim these to. Now, the next positive with these is they are totally flicker-free. I tried shooting um, shots at every shutter speed. I could not get flicker. Even at a 1 23,000th of a second, I couldn't get any flicker lines off these units. Next is the build quality. So look, okay, these don't look all that flash. Uh, there's, there's no thrills to them. They look pretty boring and pretty dull. But um, you've got a little bit of plastic here. You've got a bit of plastic at the end, industrial plastic or carbon fiber, whatever it is. All of this tube section here is metal. It's uh, either a steel or a very strong alloy. It is solid as, you're not gonna bend it. And the, um, the, what's that called, the Bowen's mount section, that is all metallic, all steel, okay? That is not gonna break, you're not gonna bend it. Um, it is solid as, so the build quality is um, amazing for the price. Now the next positive for me is the stand mount. Initially I wasn't a big fan of it, because I'm used to stirrups, but um, you can tilt all the way down and you can tilt almost all the way up. So it gives you a heap of range. And if you've got a big modifier on, like a, like a dome, um, you, you'll be able to tilt it. It's not gonna jam on the stirrup. The next thing I like is the umbrella mount is integrated into that. So you, know, you can pan and tilt this very, very easily with an umbrella mounted. The only sort of thing you'd have to be aware of is that the, um, the dish can't be used with the umbrella because the rod goes through here. But I don't necessarily think you'd want a dish if you're going through an umbrella. I think you'd want a lot of spread to fill that umbrella up so it becomes your big, light, big soft light source. Now the last thing that's gonna be a positive for a lot of people will be the fact that it has its power supply built in. So no external transformers. You just uh, plug your power cable in and you're ready to go. Now, in terms of operating it, it is really straightforward. You've got your on-off switch at the back and you've got a nice big LED display so you can see what's going on. You've got the one dimmer knob that uh, dims in 1% increments. So very, very straightforward. My only criticism of, of the dimmer is it is painfully slow. So um, the dimming range is five to 100%. At the moment, it's at 5%. If I wanna manually turn it back up to 100, 
it takes a long time to get up there. So that's the only sort of criticism I've got. It is faster with the remote control though. Now, in terms of operating the remote control, you've got a choice of four channels. To select your channel, you just press down the button and you get the choice there of channels one through to four. Okay, so let's have a look at the remote. Now, the remote, like I said earlier, is very responsive. Okay, so you've got to press it once to turn the remote on and then you're off and going. Now, one thing I do like with the remote control is you can turn the light on and off via the remote. So it'll even shut down the internal fan. Now, in terms of um, it remembering its settings, if you do a setting change, if you wait three seconds, it will remember those settings. So you can turn the power off, go to lunch, come back, turn the power back on, it will have its settings remembered. All right, so let's have a look at what it can do now. So let's uh, fade to black. And I've got to say, the dish isn't that fantastic. The dish does have a hot spot. So not, not a massive fan of the dish. But, you know, it is what it is, and it is very, very cheap. All right, so let's have a look at the unit without the dish on. Now, it's got a very, very nice even beam, huge spread, and no colour fraying on the edge of the beam. So very, very clean beam edge on it. Okay, the, you get a, a nice reduction there towards the edge, but absolutely no colour fraying. Fantastic. Now, as I said earlier in the video, the stand mount enables you to tilt even a large modifier, so that's pretty cool. And the lock-off definitely supports it. Now, I tried some optical accessories from other brands to see how they'd go. The Nanolite Forza Fresnel didn't fit. The Aperture Fresnel 2X did fit. However, because the COB is in a different point to where it sits on an aperture, it is wildly out of alignment. So as you can see here in a full flood, it's very spotty. But what did surprise me is this worked relatively well with the spotlight mount. It wasn't as sharp as it would be if it was the aperture light, but if you did buy one of these and then rent a spotlight mount, you wouldn't be too disappointed with the result. Okay, so let's go through the technical data now, starting with the brightness. So I took my measurements at three meters, so at 100% brightness. With the reflector on, the unit came in at 2,410 lux. Now with the reflector off at 100% brightness, it came in at 973 lux. At 100% brightness with the reflector on, the unit came in at 5,660 Kelvin. With an SSI score of 74. The TM30 color vector score was 94% color render with 103% saturation. Here is the wavelength analysis. And the white point was off towards pink by a delta UV score of minus 0 0.0019. Which means the light is slightly pink by less than a 1 8 correction gel. At 50% brightness with the dish on, the light came in at 5,676 Kelvin. The SSI score was 74, and the TN30 color vector score was 94% with 103% saturation. Here is the wavelength analysis, and the white point again was off towards magenta with a delta UV score of 0.0022, which is very close to a 1 8 correction gel. At 100% brightness with no dish, the light came in at 5,982 Kelvin. The SSI score was 73, and the color vector score was 93% color render with 103% saturation. Here is wavelength analysis. The white point accuracy was way off towards magenta, with a delta UV score of 0.0035, which meant the light was pink by more than a 1 8 correction gel. At 50% brightness with no dish, the light came in at 5,857 Kelvin with an SSI score of 73%. The TM30 color vector score was 94% with an average 103% saturation. Here is the wavelength analysis. The delta UV was slightly pink with a score of 0.0019. And just for giggles, I took a reading right down at the lowest value 5% brightness. The light came in at 5,619 Kelvin with a respectable SSI score of 73, a TM30 color vector score of 94% with 103% saturation. Here is wavelength analysis and dimming it added green, which neutralized the pink, giving it a delta UV score of minus 0.004. All right, so that's another gear review done. And this one's an interesting mixed bag. So for me personally, 
no battery operation and no DMX, there is no way I'd be using this in my kit. However, if you operate off mains power and don't use batteries, and you don't mind your skin tone being a little bit pink, this light is probably worth you buying. I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear. Take care.